So we will start with the E. coli side and then we'll do the Staph epi. Um, so first we'll uh, sterilize our loop. So one, two, three, four, five. And then cool it on a blank piece of auger. And then grab some culture and transfer it. So use your um, pinky to hold the cap and then the bacteria is in there. So even though this is the same culture, I'm gonna re-sterilize my loop in between each one. So one, two, three, four, five. And then cool it off on the auger, grab some culture, and re sterilize my loop. So one, two, three four, five, grab some culture, grab our next tube, and close it. So these are called slip caps. So no matter how tight you get it on there, um, the bacteria can still get oxygen. Oh, so sterilize our loop again. One, two, three, four, five. Grab some culture and then put it into our last tube, well for the E. coli anyway, and then re-sterilize our loop. So one, two, three, four, five, and then I'll just let it cool. So um, the slip caps, um, it's just good to be aware if you're using slip caps or the um, screw on caps because for these basically you just can't shake these up because it will let um, liquid up through the cap um, but the nice thing about these is that it keeps the top um, sterile and also you can't tighten them too much so that the bacteria don't get um, oxygen and then don't grow because that's a very common mistake that using slip caps just eliminates. Um, so now we'll move on to our Staph Epi tubes. So I'm just gonna re-sterilize my loop because it's been sitting there for a little while. So one, two, three, four, five, and then I'll cool it on a blank piece of auger and grab some bacteria our culture. Use my pinky to hold the lid and inoculate it, cover it, and then stick it back in my rick and re-sterilize my loop. So one, two, three, four, five. Cool it on a blank piece of auger. Grab some culture. and inoculate this one. And then re-sterilize my loop. One, two, three, four, five. Cool it on a blank piece of auger. Grab 
up some culture and then I'll use my pinky. Um, so one thing I did forget to mention was um, in general you don't want to grab the tube by the cap because it may not be tight on there and then your tube will fall down and create a mess um, and that could happen with screw-on caps as well you just didn't realize that it wasn't closed so it's good technique to just grab it by the actual tube so we'll do one more one two three four five Pull it on a blank piece of auger and then grab some culture and we'll use our pinky to hold the lid and inoculate the tube. Oh, sometimes it does not want to come off of the loop. Alright, so then we will sterilize our loop again and then let it cool so now we've inoculated all of our tubes and we'll put it into the incubator um, for two days at 35 degrees Celsius and then we will be back to observe our um, results Alright, it's been two days, so now we can go over our results for the phenyl red carbohydrate broths that we did for E. coli and Staph epi. Um, first one we'll go over is E. coli with in the phenyl red mannitol. So um, for each one, we'll want to observe if the gas was produced or and or if acid was produced. So acid was produced since it turned yellow from the reddish color that it was before. And then in the Durham tube, we do see that gas was produced as well. And our next um, tube is E. coli for the phenyl red lactose. So we see that acid was produced and because it turned yellow and then in the Durham tube we see the gas bubble so it did produce gas and our next tube is E. coli for phenyl red sucrose and um, even though it's not red it turned kind of more pink um, we would say that no acid was produced Um, and our next tube is E. coli for phenyl red glucose, and it did turn yellow, so acid was produced. And then in the Durham tube, we see an air bubble, so gas was also produced. And then for Staph epi, um, phenyl red mannitol. Um, we did not see it change to yellow, so this one did not produce acid. Um, and then this one, Staph epidermidis phenyl red lactose. So we do see a color change, so acid was produced. But in the Durham tube, oh, <laughs> I wasn't sure if I could even see a Durham tube in there, but it's in there. In the Durham tube, there's no gas bubbles, so gas was not produced. Our next tube is Staph epidermidis um, phenyl red sucrose. So there was a color change, so acid was produced, but the Durham tube doesn't have a gas bubble, so gas was not produced. And then our next tube is Staph epidermidis Funnel red glucose, and it's the same where we see that acid was produced because it turned yellow, but
but we do not see a gas bubble in the Durham tube. So gas was not produced.